in today's class we are going to discuss diffraction another phenomena exhibited by light which can be explained by assuming that light is a wave it was francisco maria grimaldi an italian mathematician and physicist who discovered the diffraction of light around 1660s and coined the term diffraction which means breaking up he interpreted the phenomena by stating that light had to consist of a very fine fluid of some sort in a state of constant vibration he laid the groundwork for the later invention of diffraction grating though this phenomena of diffraction was known to sir isaac newton and christian huygens both couldn't explain it it was augustine jean fresnel in 1815 who first succeeded in explaining the phenomena of diffraction of light on the basis of huygens wave theory fresnel a french physicist and civil engineer made significant contribution to the establishment of wave theory of light excluding newton's corpuscular theory here we have a point source of light s and this is our screen in between the point source and the screen an aperture is placed pq it is the aperture if you go by the rectilinear propagation of light here in the region ab you will be expecting complete illumination whereas above a and below the point b we are expecting a dark region that that is a geometrical shadow region in this light between the point source and the screen we have placed an opaque object or obstacle pq here the region ab we are expecting complete darkness whereas above a and below b uh, we are expecting a bright region but contrary to our expectation we can see that if an aperture or slit is placed between the source and the screen the light gets encroached to the uh, geometrical shadow region that is you will get a uh, bands of light in the geometrical shadow region similarly in the case of an obstacle 2 you can see that light there is encroachment of light into the geometrical shadow region and this happens due to the bending of light rays over the corners of obstacles this phenomena of bending of light rays over the corners of tiny obstacles and the consequent encroachment of light into the geometrical shadow region is known as diffraction now the condition for diffraction to occur diffraction of light occurs only when the size of the aperture or obstacle which causes diffraction is comparable to the wavelength of light incident over it the diffraction phenomena are usually divided into two categories first one fresnel diffraction and second one fraunhofer diffraction in the fresnel class of diffraction the source of light and the screen are in general at a finite distance from the diffracting aperture whereas in the fraunhofer class of diffraction the source and the screen are at infinite distance from the aperture this is easily achieved by placing the source on the focal plane of a convex lens and placing the screen on the focal plane of another convex lens so two converging lenses are used the first lens converts a diverging wave from the source into a plane wave whereas the second lens it converges the waves leaving the aperture to a screen here the shape of the wave front the wave front it is plane whereas in fresnel diffraction no lenses are employed and the wave front is spherical or cylindrical next is fraunhofer diffraction at a single slit actually this topic is not in your syllabus but it was there one year back so here we have a monochromatic source s 
this is aperture AB of a width small a. These are the two converging uh, lenses. So the wavefront falling on the slit it is plane. So a plane wavefront is incident on this uh, slit and this is the screen. We will be expecting a sharp image of the slit on the screen but since the beam of light uh, while passing through the slit is diffracted and gets spread out into regions where we do not expect we get a diffraction pattern on the screen consisting of a central bright band flanked by alternate dark and bright bands of decreasing intensity. This diagram, it shows the intensity distribution in the diffraction pattern due to a single slit. At the center of the screen, you will get a bright band which is of maximum intensity and we call it as the central maxima or the zeroth order maxima. On either side of the central maxima, we have first order maximas, then second order maxima, then third order maxima which are of decreasing intensity and in between the maximas we have uh, this is the first secondary minima then this is the second secondary minima and so on. Uh, from this graph it is quite obvious that the intensity of the central maxima it is very high when compared to the intensities of other maxima. In this essay we derive an expression for the width of the central maxima. If x is the distance of the first minima from P, that is if this is x the width of the central maxima it will be 2x. Here P denotes the center of the screen. So this is x and this is x. So 2x is the width of the central maxima. In this essay you will uh, derive the width of the central maxima 2x as equal to 2f lambda by a. Here, f is the focal length of the lens L2, small a is the width of the slit and lambda is the wavelength of the light incident on the slit. Please remember this expression. It will be useful while doing the experiment slit width. Next is Fraunhofer diffraction at several slits or greeting. This topic is in your syllabus and is a very important essay. So, in the first part of the essay, you should write what is meant by a plane transmission grating and how is it made. So, the first point is the phenomena of Fraunhofer diffraction at several slits, it can be demonstrated by a diffraction grating. Now, what is this diffraction grating? A diffraction grating, it consists of a large number of extremely narrow parallel slits separated by equal opaque spaces. Now next is how this diffraction grating is made. A plain diffraction grating it is made by ruling fine lines at equal distances on an optically plain glass plate with a diamond pointer. Usually gratings contain 6000 lines per centimeter. Now the width of the slit is so small that it is of the order of wavelength of light. Please note that when we make rulings of fine lines at equal distances on an optically plane glass plate, the rulings it doesn't represent the slit. Actually, the distance between these two rulings, it, it will represent the slit. Whereas, the rulings, it became opaque regions. And the distance between two opaque regions, it will act as the slit. This is how uh, normally 
uh, diffraction grating look like. Uh, this is the grating that we uh, give in our lab. Uh, it is, uh, you can see, uh, the number of lines per centimeter. Here it is uh, given as lines per inch, 15,000 lines per inch. Now we convert this lines per inch to lines per centimeter, then lines per meter and do the calculations during experiment. When you look at this grating, you won't be able to see the slits because they are so small that uh, you just see a glass plate. Okay. Uh, the slit width, uh, they will be of the order of wavelength of light. So you won't be able to see with your uh, naked eye. Now we come to the second part of the essay where we will uh, derive the grating equation. Consider a plane transmission grating XY placed with its slits parallel to each other and perpendicular to the plane of the paper. Here AB it represents a slit of width small a and BC, it represents an opaque portion of width small b. So this is the slit width small a and this is the opaque region small b. This distance small a plus small b, this distance a plus b, it is called the grating element. The points in the consecutive slits separated by a distance a plus B are called corresponding points. That is here capital A and capital C. The points A and C, they are corresponding points because they are separated by a distance A plus B. Similarly, if this point is D, now the points B and D, they are corresponding points since they are separated by a distance a plus b. Let a plane wavefront be incident on the grating normally. Most of the secondary wavelets are uh, proceeding uh, from the uh, slits uh, will continue to travel in the direction of the incident light. Uh, for example, this ray this ray and this ray, they are all traveling in the direction of the incident light. So they are saying that most of the secondary wavelets proceeding from the slit, they will continue to travel in the direction of the incident light. Now, when focused by a convex lens L, they will give a line of maximum intensity uh, on the center of the screen uh, P and this is called the central maximum. So in the second part of the essay, you give a description of the figure and mention about grating element and corresponding points. Both these are very important. Now uh, then, then say that a plane wavefront is incident normally on the Grating. So it is incident normally. Then you say about uh, secondary wavelets uh, which are traveling in the same direction as the incident light. So they are saying that those secondary wavelets and uh, those secondary wavelets means majority of the secondary wavelets they are traveling in the direction of incident light. And those uh, wavelets when focused by a lens L they will give a line of maximum intensity on the screen which is placed at the focal plane of the lens. And uh, this maximum line of intensity formed at the center of the screen, we call it as the central maximum. After mentioning about the secondary wavelets, which travel in the same direction as incident light, now we discuss those small portion of the secondary wavelets, which get diffracted at the slits in different directions. For example, you can see that the secondary wavelets it gets diffracted at an angle theta 
this also it is getting refracted at an angle theta so now we are going to discuss about the secondary wavelets which are getting diffracted at the slits and also why the small portion of this uh, secondary wavelets get diffracted at the slits it is due to uh, the it is because the width of the slit it is of the order of wavelength of light that's why diffraction occurs now consider the secondary wavelets originating from two corresponding points for example a and c traveling in a direction inclined at an angle theta with the incident beam that is these two secondary wavelets so we are now considering two secondary wavelets uh, which are diffracted at an angle uh, theta uh, from two corresponding points of the slit that is the distance between a and c it is a plus b the grating element a plus b is called the grating element now these secondary wavelets are focused onto the point p1 now can you say what is the path difference between these two secondary wavelets which are diffracted at an angle uh, theta it is obvious from the figure that from this plane cl onwards both the rays they are traveling equal distances but the first ray coming from the point a it has traveled an extra distance al compared to the secondary wavelet coming from uh, c so a L is the power difference between uh, these two secondary wavelets which are getting diffracted at an angle theta. I hope you have studied in max that if the angle between two lines it is theta, the angle between their perpendiculars must also be theta. So applying that rule here, if this is uh, theta, this angle should also be theta. Now what is uh, sine theta uh, this is our uh, this is 90 degree so this must be a hypotenuse so what is sine theta sine theta it is opposite side by hypotenuse opposite side is a l hypotenuse is this distance a plus b so sine theta will give you a l by a plus b or a l is equal to a plus b sine theta that is the power difference between two secondary wavelets which are diffracted at an angle theta is a l which is a plus b sine theta so after discussing about uh, those secondary wavelets majority of whom travel in the direction of the incident light we now discuss about uh, those a uh, small portion of those secondary wavelets which get diffracted uh, in different directions and this diffraction it occurs uh, due to the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the small slit width which is of the order of wavelength of light we considered uh, two secondary wavelets originating from two corresponding points a and c uh, um, which are getting diffracted at an angle theta with the incident beam uh, we so that those secondary wavelets they get focused at a p1 and the power difference between those wavelets we got it as a l is equal to a plus b sine theta if this part difference a plus b sine theta is equal to n lambda where n is equal to 1 2 3 etc uh, the secondary wavelets they will undergo constructive interference because par difference is equal to n lambda is the condition for constructive interference that is all the wavelets originating from the various corresponding points will be in phase and they reinforce to give different orders of maxima on the screen different orders of maxima means uh, for a value n is equal to 1 you will get the first order maxima for n is equal to 2 you will get the second order maxima and for n is equal to 3 you will get the third order maxima 
for what uh, for n is equal to 0 you will get the central maxima at p at p it is n is equal to 0 and you will get the central maxima for n is equal to 1 first order n is equal to 2 second order and so on exactly similar maxima are obtained above p due to the light diffracted upwards uh, hope you remember uh, we had uh, considered the diffracting angle theta uh, below the uh, incident direction now if you consider uh, a secondary wavelength which is diffracted upwards that is above uh, the incident uh, ray if it is subtending an angle theta then you will get similar maxima on the uh, upper side of uh, the point P. Thus on either side of central maxima P diffraction maximas of different orders are obtained symmetrically. I uh, hope you understood what I had uh, said in the earlier slide uh, that is at the center of the screen P, you will get a, a bright band whose intensity is a maximum uh, since uh, the small n is equal to 0 because there the part difference is equal to 0 and that band we call it as the central maxima or the 0th order principal maxima. Now at uh, P1 uh, we have small n is equal to 1 there also you will get a bright band and we call it as the uh, uh, first order principal maxima this is called the zeroth order principal maxima this is the first order principal maxima here you will get the uh, second order principal maxima third order principal maxima and so on now, uh, why the uh, zeroth order principal maxima is of uh, maximum intensity? Because majority of the secondary wavelets, they are traveling in the direction of the incident light and those rays, they are getting uh, focused at P. That's why uh, the intensity at P is maximum and it is called the zeroth order principal uh, maxima. Now, if you consider the secondary wavelets, which is diffracted at an angle theta, above like this which are getting uh, diffracted upwards here if it is theta now you will get a uh, sim uh, similar bands above p which are symmetrically placed this will be the uh, first order principal maxima uh, second order principal maxima third order principal maxima and so on so this is the intensity distribution of diffraction pattern due to a grating at the uh, center of the screen you are getting zeroth order principal maxima or the central maxima uh, these are the uh, first order principal maximas and the second order principal maxima and so on now in between two principal maxima you will get uh, numerous secondary maxima and uh, minima uh, that is between two principal maxima there are actually s minus 2 secondary maxima and s minus 1 secondary minima where s is the number of uh, slits actually uh, you, you don't have to uh, study or uh, in this essay how you will get uh, those numbers that is how many secondary maxima and secondary minima you are getting that is s minus 2 secondary maxima and s minus 1 secondary minima okay. now we have to derive the grating equation uh, if n is the number of lines per unit length, that is capital N represents the number of lines per unit length. Now, what is the, uh, how many lines will be there in this distance A plus B? You know that A, it represents uh, the slit and B, it represents the opaque region. Uh, the line that you draw on the glass plate with a diamond pointer, that line which we uh, draw on the glass plate, it becomes opaque. So, if there are two such lines and uh, the distance between those two lines, it will represent the slit. Okay, so A, it will, A will be the width of the slit and B will be that line. It becomes opaque when you draw uh, with a diamond pointer on the glass plate. So, there is only, uh, so in this distance A plus B, there is only one line that it represents B. B, it is the, uh, the width of that line. So, we have only one line in this distance A plus B. That's why they have written 1 in the numerator. 
So number of lines per unit length it can also be expressed as 1 by a plus b. Number of lines per unit length or a plus b is equal to 1 by n. Hope you remember this equation. This is uh, the condition for maxima which we had uh, written earlier a plus b sin theta is equal to n lambda. Substituting for a plus b as 1 by n you will get sin theta is equal to n n lambda and this is called the grating equation. Here n it represents capital N represents the number of lines per unit length. Small n is the order and lambda is the wavelength. I uh, hope you remember I had shown you a picture of a grating and there they had written 15,000 lines per inch. So it represents capital N.